Alright guys, what's up? So, I'm going to show you guys about 10 quick tips and tricks. I didn't really count, I'm just going to guess this 10. I mean, I might be wrong, but it doesn't matter. You know what? You come here to see some tips and tricks? I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. First one, easiest way to fill a like pool like this. I think this is like 9 by 9. To eat. So I found, I used to do the trick where you would place it all on the wall and place it all on another wall which would in turn fill it which is sort of fast so it's helpful but yeah first you want to get one or two buckets ho however many buckets you want actually it doesn't really matter just have the buckets of water and you want to make sure you make an infinite water source or be near like an ocean or just an easy way to get water and you want to go diagonally you want to go all the way across we're gonna have to run all the way over here. Just cut in the middle. You're gonna keep going all the way across. All the way. One last one should do it. And once you do that, the entire pool will fill up. As you can see, now the entire pool is an infinite water source, of course, but that's all you need to do, is you just go diagonally anyway. I find it easier to put a different block in the diagonal areas if you're going to do this because you know, there's no outline like you see how there's black outline around this stone block right there but there's no outline when you're looking down into the water so that's, yep, that's the easiest way then over here I just want to show you the same sort of thing except I'm just showing you that it has to be a one block level. You cannot do it if it's more taller, like if it's like this, for example. See how this is two blocks tall? You cannot do it like that. It has to be one layer. Like that. If you attempt to do it two blocks tall, you can't even really attempt to do it because you have to start in one corner and then you have to like place the blocks all the way along from here to here here all the way diagonally until you inevitably finish what you want wanted to do but that would take a very long time as well as you have to place blocks all the way through there like down here along the diagonal to just to make sure your water would flow correctly alright the next trick is shields and explosions, explosion radius, stuff like that. So you put a shield in your, up, well, up in this slot, you know, you crouch, I'm on the PlayStation by the way, you crouch, it blocks, shields can block explosive damage. See? Uh, I broke the, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there you go. A little tip. They're all tips, whatever. <laughs> no matter, I, I don't know for sure how much TNT would take to break a shield. It'd, be, it'd probably be like 20, 25 around there. But yeah, into the next one. One blaze rod can smelt up to 12, like, or 12 blocks, whatever pieces, like 12 food. Anything that sort of way, it can spill up to 12. So, what you want to do is yep, just exactly this. It tells you exactly what to do fuel, ingredient. So, just kill Blaze in the nether. You have, to, you have to go to the nether, is the sad thing. But once you get to the nether, you find one Blaze. Maybe you maybe get more if you want. Then you kill it, get the Blaze Rod, take it back, hit whatever you want to smell. You can smell 12 of them exactly. I mean, I don't have it set up, but a lava bucket is best for smelting because it can smelt up to 100 or each each bucket of lava. It's extremely good. I mean, of course, it is lava, so it's going to be extremely good. Yeah, we'll just let that smell up. It doesn't matter if you watch it. You you know it will smell well. Then that's right here. This is showing the slowest to the fastest way to run. No normal running. Like no jumping or anything, you go. I'm not for sure, but pretty pretty slow. And if you're running and jumping, it's much faster, but still extremely slow. 
But if you put down trap doors like this, it doesn't matter if they go sideways or not, but you just have to have them down, you go even faster. Most like most likely because there's just like a tighter block. See how you have that gap above your head there? And you don't have a gap here. That's why you can like jump quicker. Because basically you can run much faster. Then if you do it on ice, it's much faster. You can even get launched like that since it's in. But of course, you could always just use a slip motion. So let's test this out real quick. This is a regular speed. You see how fast you go? Also, it's lingering. I should have used a lingering one, but that's alright. Here's a. Let's see that at a regular speed down there? Speed 2. Watch how fast you go. Look at that. You go extremely fast. You, or even just the regular running, you go super fast. Or just regular trap doors. Either way, when using a speed potion or a speed 2 potion, or using trap doors and ice, which is the same as just regular trap doors, but ice is much faster for some reason. Not really sure how it works, but I guess you just can like run faster on it. Because I don't know, for sure. I'm not particularly sure about how that works. But I mean, you can always test it. The bad thing about this is ice because whatever you want to build so like say you want to build a tunnel to get like to that village over there and you start like down there so it's a straight line it's it's a problematic because you have to have so much ice trapdoors are easy to get they're like four wood six, six wood yeah six wood and all you gotta do is just place it like that and you tell it comes with like three I think every time I'm not for sure I haven't played this in a while but then you just book it through. That's really fast. Alright. Let's move on to the next trick. This is to do with fishing. Regular fishing, you know. I'm not for sure of the chances of getting like how fast to get a fish. But when you turn it into raining, then supposedly it's thirty percent better, thirty percent faster catch a fish. I'm not particular for sure. I don't like fish a lot because it's easier just to run around and mine. You don't really have to worry about fishing. But if you need food, wait till it rains. It's the best time. Also, so that we're going to just have a fish. I rock on. See how fast that was? And also, luck into C3 and lure 3, which do help improve what you get and how fast. fast you get a fish. It's it's pretty cool. The different problem is though is getting the books and having levels and all that stuff. Now we're gonna talk about pickaxes. The slowest of course is a wooden pickaxe. The fastest is a gold pickaxe but it, but you can't mine anything above iron. You can't mine gold you can't mine diamond you can't mine anything important like that. You can't even mine obsidian or anything. But it's just it's just fast. But and it breaks even slower than the wooden pickaxe. Like okay, faster I should say. It breaks much, much faster. And then there's just the diamond pickaxe, which is clearly the best. So here, I'll show you we'll go through this amount of blocks. Um it's a three by three by three cube, of course. So this is how long it takes for wood to wooden pickaxe to go through it. I'll speed it up for you. There you go. As you can see, it took me down to about half the pickaxe dur durability down there for about 27 blocks of cobblestone. Which you know you can go through <laughs> quite fast. <laughs> so that, see, not not too great. Pretty slow. Can last longer than this golden pickaxe, but it's still pretty slow. Now this is how fast. Let's put those back because I didn't start yet. This is how fast the gold pickaxe can mine. I don't need to speed it up for you guys. 
And also, we are going to mine those two blocks just to keep the text there. As you can see, after 27 blocks, counting those two, it is about to break. Like it's about 30 blocks for that gold pickaxe to get destroyed. Then there's the diamond pickaxe, which can mine about the same speed as gold, a little bit slower, not much but about the same speed, and its durability is extremely better. See? These are all 27 blocks, and these last just 29 blocks, and the durability is not even like a millimeter down. So, really, the wooden pickaxe is a million times better than the gold pickaxe, and the diamond pickaxe is <laughs> a billion times better than both of them. So always go for diamond rather than wood or gold. Of course, when, when you're starting, you have to go with wood, sadly. Uh, we'll move in here. This little shift. So when you have a magma block like this, down at the bottom of water, which every single one of these blocks is a water block, that's why I have these trapdoors there, to block the water from coming out. Let's see, right here I don't, or else it would just like flow out like this. And then, and or, when you have soul sand in the middle. Magma blocks, well, here, I'll start with soul sand. Soul sand, when you go over it, the water it launches you upwards. See, I wasn't holding up or anything right there. It just launches you upwards. And magma blocks like that one down there drag you downwards, which also you will start taking damage. So you don't want to stand on it too long, or else you could die. And then, since it's dragging you down, you might drown depends on how deep it's dragging you. Like you'll find you'll find these out in the ocean in ravines and it'll just <laughs> drag you down. It'll drag your boat down, it'll drag everything down, and it'll just slowly kill you. Which is not fun. But as you can see, as it's full sand, the bubbles will go upwards. Which means that they'll push you up and magma blocks will just go downwards. So anytime you're out in the ocean, watch out for bubbles, bubbling like that. You'll be able to see them, as well as when you go over them, you'll hear that noise. You'll hear this noise. Which means that you now went, entered like a Madden blocked area. Which in turn means that you want to get out of there as fast as possible. Now the soul sand here. You'll hear this noise. Quite a weird noise compared to the magma box. Which you can get out of, by the way, if you hold it just long enough. You can get out of it. It's very, very slow compared to the regular. Unless you're up top like that and you're already out of water. And this one, this fish was walking on water at this point. Push the hole, jump, hold upwards. That's pretty much my next one. Slime blocks. They can block all damage from fall no matter how high up you are. Say you're a million blocks in the sky, you can't go that high, but say you're a million blocks in the sky and there's a slime block down below you. You land on it, you'll survive. You'll be perfectly fine. Also, it's kind of like a trampoline, you just bounce on it. It's, pre it's pretty cool. And they're very, e they're very easy to make. You just gotta find a few slimes. It takes nine slime balls to make one slime block, only one. That's the, that's the sad part. And down here, I set up a little little thing. I'll show you in just a just a minute. I want to get to this first, and we'll come right back to that. So let's go ahead on down place to the magma block. And I want to show you this. All you need is just water, really. That's all you need. Whoops. Let's put this back. This is a little house that you can build a one block house in P on PC or Bedrock Edition. You can just need like a trapdoor. You can like place a trapdoor here, you'll walk up to it and click it up, and it'll push you down to one block height where it looks like basically looks like you're swimming. Let's see if I can get my character to do it. See, it looks like this, like kind of swimming, you know? It's, it's weird, but if you do that and you like run on water and push yourself into a one block gap, you can stand here, and for 
PlayStation is going to show you like just literally standing. It's it's pretty weird, but you don't take damage. See, I'm in a wood block right now, and I'm going to take damage. But so I built a little house for you. It's got every necessity you could need. It's got a composter, an enchantment table, everything. It's got your chest, which you can still open, your brewing stands, which you can use, your crafting table, and your chest, furnace, your stone cutters, your grindstones. The bad thing is you can't stand on top of the chest or else it won't work. And you can walk over all of this. Everything in here you can walk around, walk through, walk over, and you'll be fine. Except for this right here. If you fall into that, you're stuck. And you can't get back out of it unless you break the ceiling and climb out or whatnot. And you can't really sleep in here or else it'll just make you stand up regularly and you'll just be glitched through the ceiling, which, which sucks. But but this little trap door here is like a mini door because you can't actually have like a the door in the way or else it'll stand, make you stand up as well. It's pretty cool. I do this in most of my survival worlds, honestly. It's it's really compact and really nice. Let's move on to the final thing I want to show you. The good old slime block test. So I've got slime blocks all the way. Now that's like I think in 120 block drop. It's quite a distance. So, you know, you, you normally, would, you'd take damage and you'd die from this. Because of the distance you're at. But, you got slime blocks, like I said, I've got nine down here. Watch this. You just bounce. Look at that. Just bouncing up and down. And if you want to stop yourself, you just hold shift or crouch, and it just stops. Also, there's a bunch of ones. And they break. That's pretty cool. But yeah, that's about it for the tips and tricks. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, tell me if you want to see more. I'll make more tips and tricks. I'll show them. Yeah, have a good day.